Dismantling a Stuart Victoria steam plant part 3. Removing all of the boiler fittings for inspection and replacement where necessary. And first of all, I won't keep you waiting from the last episode. What was wrong with the water gauge? Well, quite a lot really. This is quite an old boiler, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. With no connection to my first wife, or my second one for that matter. I'm going to remove the water gauge for a closer examination. Here, I'm taking out the top cap. Because this is a Scotch return tube boiler, it has a special fitting that holds the chimney. And before I can remove the water gauge, I need to take this off. It's held in place with three nuts on three long studs that are silver soldered into the boiler. The fire goes down the tube that you can see the open end of, and it bounces back from the other end of the boiler down these tubes that you can see, the pair of them, and then the exhaust gases go up the chimney. This boiler's really well made. Just look how many stays it has on the flat part of the back head. It appears to be very strongly made. Before I show you the removal of the water gauge, I will show what the problem was. It's most unusual to find the hole where the glass goes restricted by such a lot of lime scale. The top bit's okay, it's the bottom fitting that's the problem. Here I've turned the boiler upside down to drain all of the water out. And as you can clearly see, most of the water is coming out of the top fitting. Very little water is coming out of the bottom fitting of the water gauge. This is not a new boiler, and I do think that these fittings have been on there for a long, long time. Here's a close-up of the back head, and as you can see, it's very well put together. The silver soldering is impeccable, and there are four extra stays in it. Time now to remove the water gauge, and look what happens. It's sheared off incredibly easily. This is a typical problem with old brass fittings. Look at the colour of the brass. It looks almost like copper. This brass has de-zinkified. Here's a much better image, and you can clearly see the colour of the brass against the phosphor bronze which the mounting is made from. What's left of the water gauge fitting is extremely corroded. What I'm doing here is squirting in a bit of WD-40. I left it for a while, and then I used one of these really old Dormer screw extractors. I've had these for years. They have a left hand thread, so all you do is screw them into the hole. The varicose thread on the extractor bites into the metal and just removes it very easily. I showed this job in a video a while back, but I didn't use a stud extractor, because not everyone has a stud extractor. I just used a tapered square file, gently tapped into the fitting to remove it. Then I got the usual load of comments from viewers telling me that I should have used a stud extractor. So just for the record, yes, I've had these for years. And a set of good quality stud extractors are a very useful addition to your workshop. But it's no good if you don't have any, and the square file method works perfectly well. You could even grind up a piece of square bar on the grinding wheel. Whichever way you do it, the main thing is to get rid of the offending thing that's stuck in the hole. And what's left of the water gauge is now gone forever. I'm cleaning up the front part of the housing using some emery cloth. To be honest, steam engines and boilers are a bit of a pain. If you don't run them frequently and leave them for a while, you get problems. Like rust, excessive lime scale, cathodic corrosion, and quite a few other random sort of weird problems. On an old boiler such as this one, it's well overdue for a major service. I've just removed the check valve adapter, and at first I thought this had broken off, but no, it's some sort of sealant. If I remember from my dark and distant past, I think this stuff is called hermatite. And it's done the trick, really, because if you look at the state of the threads, they're in quite good condition. On the water gauge mounting, the thread is 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch, and the one for the check valve adapter looks like a quarter by 32 threads per inch thread. I'm going to make another check valve adapter, but I think I'll make one using phosphor bronze. These Stuart cast check valves came off okay. They didn't break and they're in quite good condition. This is a nice touch, a shaped brass washer where the check valve adapter fitted. It's quite a good idea. It saves all the time it takes to make the wooden cladding perfect. Time to take a look at the pressure gauge. Now this is a bit strange. Normally a pressure gauge has a siphon, 
and the reason for this is to stop hot steam getting into the pressure gauge and melting the soft solder in there. But nevertheless, this one has survived okay, so when I refit it to the boiler, I'll do it in exactly the same way. I need to disconnect this piece of pipe that's lagged using string, which goes from the wet steam outlet on the boiler to the superheater inlet. I think I will probably make a new one of these before I put the boiler back together and make it from a piece of phosphor bronze or gunmetal. That will be much stronger and less prone to corrosion. When I open the front door of the boiler, here is the superheater and this is the next thing to come out. But before I do that, I'm taking off the door. The door hinge is held in place with three small bolts, one of which was a machine screw. Now the door's out of the way, it's easy to get my hand in the front of the boiler. And here comes the superheater. It's very simple, all it is is a coil of pipe, and the pipe is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and it is of course made from copper. Looking at the construction, this part of the boiler is not part of the barrel. It's a separate piece that's been soldered in position. These fittings are held in place by nuts underneath, so I'm holding the nut with my hand and unscrewing the fitting. First of all, the superheater inlet fitting, followed by the superheater outlet fitting that currently is holding the steam valve. And that's it. The boiler has been stripped. I haven't finished yet though, I'm going to remove the boiler banding and the cladding and put it in the acid bath, but that will be in another episode. All that's left to say is stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.